All right, so this Knife Thoughts video, as you can see here, if I can get my cam right where I want it, is a uh, unboxing video of the 2020 run of the GEC number 47 Viper. And um, I wanted to do this live for a couple of reasons. Um, it's kind of the point of, of a, uh, an unboxing, right? Is that you get to kind of share in the excitement and um, there's a lot of excitement behind this knife. And also, uh, I've never gotten all of the different versions of a knife from GEC at once. Um, I even have, uh, I think maybe once got the normal, I got all of the handle materials of the 35 beer and sausage knife. Um, but that was the first time I did that. Uh, so kind of a new thing for me. I don't typically get more than one version. Um, but the reason I did on these 47 Vipers is because the 47 Viper is a, um, a pattern that has been really, really popular and sought after even before things got like really quite crazy with, with GEC um, here in the last year or two and particularly uh, in 2020. Um, and so it's a pattern that, that was really popular kind of since they came out. They've done a couple different runs. Um, and for whatever reason, well, actually there are some reasons why I, I never got one. I never had one. I never really, you know, I've never done videos on this pattern. Um, so I wanted to, you know, do this video live as an unboxing and, um, and start opening it here. This uh, really cool sticker is from traditional pocket knives, C. Reisner Cutlery. I bought a few of them from, from Austin there at traditional pocket knives. They actually got here before the, the knives themselves, which I'll talk about in a second, but I wanted to put that in for the thumbnail there. Um, but, uh, so I wanted to get these and the reasons I didn't, haven't gotten them previously, this pattern, is because for a while I just didn't really think I was super into swaybacks. I did have opportunities to get them even when they were, you know, a little bit hard to find uh, because they had some store models at the rendezvous at least in 2019. Uh, might need to sharpen the pen blade on this here. Sorry for the shakiness. Um, but I just never got one. And so uh, I actually, I'm sure some people are gonna be irritated by the fact that I have uh, all four versions in this box here, but, but there's a relatively good reason. As soon as I saw the Great Eastern Cutlery posted, um, they posted kind of like a teaser picture. They do this sometimes uh, with what's in the hallway is what I think they call it. And there's, they'll post a picture on their greateasterncutlery.net blog of like some cryptic thing. And they posted one a while back that had uh, several different things in it, but the relevant things were uh, a horse and a snake. And I knew that that meant that they were going to be doing, or I thought that they were going to be doing the 74 and the 47. And they ended up doing both. Um, they did the 74 Mustang, and here is the 47 Viper. And as soon as I saw that, I emailed uh, Ken at Blue Creek Cutlery and let him know that I wanted to you know, get these. I don't even think at that time that I had said I wanted all of them. Um, but then once I saw the production schedule updates with what they were, I decided to, to tell them I wanted all of them. And so, I, I like I say, I understand some people are going to be irritated by the fact that this is, you know, a lot of people can't get one, let alone all of them. But I emailed as soon as they posted that picture. I didn't wait for the production schedule or for it to be announced on Blade Forms or anything like that. As soon as I saw that, I was pretty sure that it meant these were coming. Uh, so, you know, I just kind of took my shot. So this is all of the different versions of this knife. Um, and like I said, they're all from Blue Creek Cutlery. Uh, and I want to do these in the order that these came out. So I believe that was the burlap first. So we'll start with that. Um, and this is the 47 pattern. Kind of set this down to the side here. Uh, the 47 Viper, this is the Titty Ute um, in brown burlap micarta. So let's take a look at it. Like I said, the first time I've had this pattern and you know, I wanted to try it out because a lot of people really like it. I've never really given it a chance and I wanted to give it a chance. Um, and you know, I, I won't lie to you and say that I, I'm not also aware that uh, if I end up not really liking this pattern or not liking a particular one of these, um, that I can trade them or sell them if I need to. 
Uh, but I'll tell you, I like the look of this one right off the bat. Oh, yeah, I like that a lot. Um, it's funny when sometimes when you get a knife, you're like, oh, that's cool. You know, and sometimes it's like, well, that's that's cool. Um, and I think I'm in the, the latter category here on this one. Um, pretty dang cool, I'll tell you what. So first thing I noticed there was that uh, it sits, the tip sits nice and deep in the handle there. I really like that. You know, if you watch my channel that I hate a proud tip, I foul kicks, you know, more than I should. And it definitely does not look like I'm going to need to on this, which I was a little bit concerned about. Um, they've been doing even the Warncliffe tips a little bit high uh, recently. Another thing here I'm noticing is that this shield seems to be fit really well. That's another thing that, yeah, look at that. Really pretty nicely fit on that shield. Um, sometimes the shields have some gaps and that one doesn't seem to. Also nicely centered, um, no gaps. Whew. That's a nice knife, I'll tell you what. Um, I also like that the swedge, that the nail nick doesn't sit on the swedge on this one. That's one thing I wasn't a huge fan of on the Rough Rider work knife. And nice action. It does feel like there's a little bit of grit in there that if I put some mineral oil in, it'll work out for sure. But ooh, nice crisp action on that. No blade play. No blade wrap that I can feel. I'll tell you what, I think I get it. I think I get the hype on these. Um, that's a cool knife. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a little insight into my mind right now. Um, looking at this one, which I'd say is probably like the least fancy of these, I'm a little bit worried that I'm going to want to keep all of these. And I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense for me financially. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a cool knife and I'm worried I'm going to like them all. Uh, I did, did come with a pin and as you can see, the pin matches the sticker. Uh, Austin at Traditional Pocket Knives had the great idea of asking GEC if he could make stickers out of the pins and different art associated with the knives. And I think that was a really good call um, and cool that he asked them too. And uh, I think that they look really good. Made them for the 35 knives also. Um, should be, yeah, I think that the plum jig bone was next. Um, so there's a pla black plum jig bone. I had intended actually, I was like hoping I would like this one and keep this and I had a 74 in this black plum jig bone. I decided to sell it really just because I uh, had a grail come up. I um, did a, an article. Uh, so there are 47s, Agent Orange Peel asks, are there 47s that are, are, are the 47s always Warncliffe's or is it just the Vipers? Um, there are 47s from the, on the, uh, farm and field brand that are, um, sheep foot blades. Uh, but that's only the farm and field version, which is called the hay and helper. Um, and so the only thing that the fort has been on the 47 frame, if I'm remembering correctly, has been the Vipers other than in the farm and field, uh, brand. Um, but I had intended to keep this and the Black Plum Jig Bone 74, uh, but I decided to sell that 74 to get a Grail knife that I posted an article about recently, um, and it wasn't quite what I thought it was, unfortunately, but still a cool knife. I'll do a video on it, too. Um, so this one, what I am noticing, and I wish I had it to compare it, but it looks a little bit lighter, but pretty close in color to the 74 I had, um, same jigging style, uh, same shield, which looks again, uh, pretty good there. I don't see any big gaps or anything. Um, same deal, no gaps on the back spring. Um, this one sits a little higher, definitely sits a little higher in the frame for sure. Actually, uh, it's not proud. And one nice thing with the Warren cliff is that it, it kind of just, you know, is smooth along with this curve. So it's not proud, but it does sit a little higher. This one is smoother, I'll tell you that. This doesn't have that gritty feel. And I do really like this, this um, etch. Uh, the 19 had a pretty cool etch. The little rattler. Interestingly here, I feel that the, um, the stamp is a little bit overlapped, which is weird. I have not seen that before. It's actually pretty weird to me that, that they would stamp that like that. Let me take a look at the... Uh, at the burlap one. 
see if that's like that. It's pretty close, huh? Um, but, uh, a super nice action on this. Real, real smooth. Um, super smooth. Uh, and it does seem to be pinchable, which I always like knife to be pinchable. Um, let me see if this one's pinchable. Yeah, it's still pinchable. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if this one uh, gets as smooth as, as this one, as the, if the burlap gets as smooth as the jigged bone. But let's move on. So same deal, super nice. Um, really, really no issues. Really like a pretty, pretty perfect knife. Um, especially if you like that purple. And that's the thing, I do like the bowl. There's actually two different uh, handle covers in this that I don't really have a good example of. And that's uh, a purple knife with a black, black plum jig bone, which is like a super dark purple. And then I don't have any ironwood knives. Um, I, I meant to get one on the 23, but I had enough 23s. So this is the 47 in ironwood. Man, sometimes the tubes recently have been like real tough to get into, in my opinion. Um, let's see if I can open the bottom. Holy heck. Probably watching, thinking like, wow, what a weakling, but I don't really think <laughs> I have weak hands. Um, you know, I, I teach a martial art. I'm not a, I'm a relatively large individual. Um, they've been sometimes pretty tough to open, but same pin. Uh, they did different pins for the different handle materials on the 35. Doesn't seem to be the case on these. And um, some people have said that the, the grain, the wood on these 74 or 47s um, are, have been nicer than the grain on the 74. So let's take a look at what I got. Pretty nice. Got a little knot there right at the pin. That's kind of cool. It kind of makes it look like it's swirling around the pin. A little darker on this other side here. And pretty good looking, I would say. Um, no gaps, super, super nice there. Man, these, these look well done. And then you see threaded bolsters with the three lines. I like that too. Although I will say, now let's see if you can see this here. This side, the threaded bolsters, it almost looks like they don't go the whole way to the edge, um, which is pretty interesting. And then on this side, it looks a little bit lighter on this end than on this end. So just one of those things where it's like, you probably wouldn't notice that normally, but taking a real close look at it like I am here. Um, so this tip is also probably closer to sitting where the black plum jig bone is. In fact, I think the black plum jig bone sits a little bit lower. Uh, so this one's sitting a little higher. And then you see here how unlike the, um, this one was also titty No, the uh, the black plum jig bone, or yeah, the black plum jig bone is titty Um So unlike the titty utes, that's it. So Agent Orange, Orange Peel says that he uses his other GECs to open the tubes. I just used the 33 that I used to open the box to open the tube. Um, don't use the blade, use the, uh, use the bolster. So a little pro tip there from Agent Orange Peel. Um, but, uh, You can see the difference here that the, the nail nick sits in this cut swedge versus sitting below this drawn swedge on the titty ute. North feels a cut swedge here, titty ute has a drawn. I do prefer both, honestly, the look and the feel of the uh, drawn swedge. Cut swedge, like, I think is a nice feature for, like, the fineness of it, the actual manufacturing, uh, but I actually like the look of the drawn swedge better. So... This one has, I think this is called a bomb shield. I don't know. I never remember all the names of the shields, but um, again, see, seems pretty well seated in there. Uh, this one is getting close, I'd say, to where I'd consider dropping the kick if it was going to be a user. And a teensy weensy little bit of crack in that wood or chip, I guess you would say. So I don't know. What, what, what do you think? Do you think that's something that you would care about on, on a knife, you know, on a... How much did these cost? It seems I feel feel like a jerk that I don't remember, but um, you know, not an inexpensive knife. You know, is that something? I'd love to hear your opinions here during the video, but uh, I don't want to dwell on it too long. If that crack, or in the comments, if you're watching this later, um, if that little crack at the lanyard tube um, is something that you would care about, looks fine on this side though. 
and um, let's see about, ooh, nice action. Real smooth, real snappy, for sure. Very, very nice. Now let's see how that cut swedge, I would say that it makes pinching it open a little bit more difficult. Just a little more difficult. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll work, but definitely a little more difficult. That's another reason why I don't love the cut swedge as much. Uh, <laughs> the crack adds some jazz to it, huh? That's one way to look at it. Um, but it has the same uh, stamps. Well, it has the NXL stamp. Uh, and yeah, nice to action. Let's see if it has no blade play, no uh, blade wrap. So that's something I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll keep it. Maybe I won't. I, I'm not sure. I'll have to think about it. Um, but it is something that, that I'm not super thrilled to see for sure. Uh, a crack, a little crack like that, or chip. Um, but you know, let's see how, let's see if we hit the lottery, so to speak on this sandbar stag. Some of these are looking good. Some of them not really my taste in stag. Uh, so let's see what I got. Holy heck, I'll tell you what, these are tough to open the first time. So this is what I'm talking about. Now, so I'm sure somebody's gonna say, don't do this, it's gonna loosen the pivot of your knife. And that might be the case, it might loosen the pivot a little bit, but you can always just kinda squeeze it back to where it was or, or lightly hammer it with a cloth around it. But um, this is what I'm talking about here. And I actually had someone, um, I'm, <sighs> Twilight Shooter, they've got several different usernames across different uh, platforms, but, <laughs> um, Someone recommended to me doing it, uh, opening on the bottom so that it doesn't hurt the uh, little sticker. Um, so I'll do that. I don't think it, you know, it's not something that I'm super worried about, but you get the actual this onto there, the opening and open. And like, you know, that in itself didn't affect the pivot at all. So let's see what we got. Um, it seems to all of mine anyway came with pins. And what do we have? I actually do have a GEC tube popper. Um, Samuel Frankel uh, says you need a GEC tube popper. I have one from the AMKCA. I just uh, didn't have it out for this. So what do you think? I would say it's not the worst looking stag I've seen on this run. I would say it's not exactly my taste in stag. I like to see either like popcorny stag or, you know, like valleys. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I've see you on Instagram pretty frequently, or all the time. I think we've messaged. Um, yeah, yeah, we were just messaging today. Anyway, uh, <laughs> if you're watching this video later on after the live, you probably won't know what I'm talking about there. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, this is not my favorite stag I've ever seen, but to be honest, I think that there wasn't a whole lot of great looking stag on this run. It is kind of smooth for stag. Uh, it's not very thick, which I'm not always a huge fan of thick stag, uh, but it seems pretty well fitted. That's that's a good thing. Sometimes stag, like I was a little bit concerned that right here was gaps, but I don't think uh, although there might be some gap between this cover and the bolster yeah it does look like see that little gap there um so much more polished blade as you can see nice action i would say the tip sits closer to like the black plum jig bone than to the uh either the burlap micarta or or even as high as the um ironwood uh nice action not quite as smooth as the black plum jig bone was but still nice and snappy. Um, so this isn't probably the best way to check for blade wrap, but I just use my thumbnail to feel for any, you know, dings. And you can also look at the edge. Uh, but I don't feel any there. And no blade play either. Um, so yeah, nice. I mean, like I say, uh, I do like stag knives and I think that as a user, this is probably a good stag knife because it's not super thick and would be easy to carry. Um, but I'm not sure that this is gonna be a keeper for me. 
Uh, but like, yeah, someone just commented it's a beautiful blade. That is true. It's very nicely polished and uh, nicely done. Uh, and well done on the cut swedge. Like I say, it's not my preference, um, but it's, you know, well done. It's, it's, a, it's a nice feature. Uh, so I'm gonna lay them all out here. So there's the stag. Here is the ironwood. Let's see if we can maybe turn them a little bit more so that they get the whole way in picture. I'm still working on my uh, my lighting setup. I, I ever since moving, I, I don't feel like I, I have right the right lighting setup, and uh, I'm working on it, I'm trying to get some like um, indirect lighting going. But even that's been a little bit difficult. Uh, but anyway, now for me of these, I think that these two are my favorite. Just like off the bat. I, this one really hit me the right way. Uh, I wish that this one had the etch, but you know, on a user, which I do plan to use one of these, on a user, the etch, you know, is going to wear away and stuff. Um, but this one hit me real, real nicely. Uh, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this uh, this chip. I, I maybe will ask about it on on the Great Eastern Cutlery Club. Facebook group where I, uh, you know, I'm an admin and everything and see what people think. Um, but, and then the stag, uh, not the best stag I've ever seen, slight gap there, but otherwise nice. Um, so yeah, uh, a heck of a mail call. I've never really had a mail call like this. Um, like I've said in other videos, uh, knives come and go. I like to try different patterns. Um, the 47 is one that I've never had. I've never tried. I've never done a video on. So I kind of went all in and uh, and more than I normally do on this run. And I'm happy to, to try them out. Now, uh, this one, like I said, I was thinking, oh no, maybe I'm gonna wanna keep all of these. I think I'm gonna happy, be happy not keeping all of them, um, but uh, I'm happy to have tried them all out. I do like the look of this ironwood, um, so you know, maybe I'll keep that one too, but we'll see. And uh, I'm happy to have gotten it. I've realized that I'm privileged to get this many GECs at once. Again, I understand that some people are probably irritated by it, uh, but um, I am also hoping to do another pattern kind of adjacent as the 48. I've never had one, I've never done a review on, so I might try to trade into one of those with one of these. But anyway, I hope that this unboxing has been uh, enjoyable for you. I hope it's been interesting for you. Um, I hope that you got the Vipers you wanted or get the Viper you wanted and the GECs in general. If you have uh, you know questions on how to do that, certainly you can reach out. And I also have an article on how to buy GECs at knifethoughts.com. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications and set it to all so you get notified when I post videos and go live like this and things. And then last, check out my social media. I'm on pretty much everything at Knife Thoughts. And uh, don't forget to go out and do good.